Hey, everybody, Keith Niebuhr with Gators Online to talk a little Florida Gators football. We've got a special guest today, J.D. Piquel of On3. He's one of our rising stars, video superstar in the industry. Love talking to him. Played college football. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I didn't. He did. So he's got some uh, some depth of knowledge there that I can't bring to you, but also really just a good guy that's a fun guy to talk to. And and so we're going to break down last week's Florida-Utah game and, and just look a little bit ahead for the Florida Gators. So, JT, first of all, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Man, with that intro, I appreciate you having me on. This is a blast. I'm glad we got to get together here. Well, uh, yeah, and, and I, I agree. I'm glad to have you. And so you were one of the guys going into that game last week that, that thought Florida could win. I think you have a prediction on the record. You, mm -hmm. you might want to go, <laughs> go scratch that. But, yeah, you, you thought that Florida had a very good chance to win that game. You didn't predict a blowout or anything like that. You thought it would be a competitive game that, that Florida would pull out at the end. What kind of – Let's let's just look back for a second. What kind of gave you the feeling that Florida had the type of, of ability to pull that one out to win that first game? Yeah, going into that game, Keith, I think a lot of people, myself included, thought, hey, that backfield is going to be good enough to where you can lean on them and you get it to the second half, get it to the fourth quarter, and those guys get to wear on that Utah defense like, okay, we, we got a chance here for Florida Gators. The thing that was interesting to me was I still don't think we have a great gauge for what this team's going to be because they got out of their game plan so early. Like going into this game, we were saying, hey, this Florida offense is not built to be in some kind of track meet with Utah. Like if they have to answer scores consistently, this could go another way. And once you know it, uh, Money Parks right out of the gate from Bryson Barnes puts a touchdown on the board. So that that's unfortunate to see. I thought the defense played pretty well for the most part after that. But as a whole, yeah, they, they kind of got knocked in the mouth really early. And they, you know, to their credit, continued to fight. But with the new clock rules, it was tough to, to get back into it. So the, as a whole, the game plan we thought they were going to run within that game, no pun intended, uh, they never really got to execute. All right, so a lot of things went wrong. And, and it, a lot of it was um, uh, errors that coaches say, J.D., are correctable. But you, you play, so you'll, you're going to give us some insight into how correctable some things really are. But the big special teams blunder with the two guys wearing the same jersey, generally pretty not the, pretty mediocre on special teams. Actually, that may be putting it kindly. And then obviously a lot of the penalties along the offensive line and the struggles, especially in the run game with the offensive line. But uh, for you, what were the biggest issues? What 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 does Florida really need to fix moving forward? I think we need to fix the things that are correctable, kind of like you alluded to, to Keith. I mean, some of the biggest frustrations were some of the things you saw in the first game of year two were things you expect from a, a team in year one. Like we're jumping off sides, we're going forward on fourth and one, and we're going to find a way to you know put some points on the board here. Um, just just things that have nothing to do with talent were the, were the most frustrating part of it. And so it is week one. You are still kind of getting your sea legs under you. You did play a good football team on the road. You know, a, a team that's back to back Pac-12 champions, even without their starting quarterback, is still a really good roster. And so I think the concerning thing to me was stuff that you could control behind closed doors. You didn't execute on the field. Like the thing you alluded to, the whole deal with the jersey numbers during special teams, like we, we can avoid that. We, we, we can rep that during practice and find a way to not have that come back and bite us in the game. So the concerning thing is I think that's something that is allowed behind closed doors and then it happens in a game. Like, like none of those things that were procedural or you know, things that were pre-snap probably happened for the first time in that game on Thursday night. I think they've probably happened for a while behind closed doors. So again, only week one, don't want to over project and over simplify what the issues were in week one, but uh, got to clean that up quick, fast in a hurry. All right. You've been on teams before we mentioned this. And, and if you want to get into your background, you can, but you've been on teams, I'm sure in, in your lifetime of playing football, where you went into a game, you felt good. You felt like, Hey, we're going to shock some people. We're going to surprise some people. We're better than everybody expects. And then you just sort of lay in it. And it happens. It's, it's part of the game. But what do you think the mental state of the fo Florida football team is coming out of a situation like that? Where, quite frankly, they were, I don't want to say humiliated, but they did not look good in a primetime game that pretty much everybody in the country was watching because there wasn't much else going on. So what's going on through the heads of those young 18 to 22-year-old kids right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's two ways it can go. The first is you start to just have some imposter syndrome. You say, well, maybe that is who we are. Maybe what the tape says and things that we didn't do well, maybe that is actually our identity. And there's, there's another side of this that's going to fall on the leaders where, hey, that's not acceptable. 
Let that make you upset. Let that motivate you to be better in practice, to get that corrected, to never feel this way again. And so we said it in our video, actually, Keith, like it falls on the people that you look to in that locker room, the people like Graham Merch, the Ricky Pierce stalls, like you go down the line here, guys that are leaders in that locker room have to make a statement to everybody else involved. Like this is not okay. We're not going to allow this anymore. We're not going to stand for this anymore. In terms of just that feeling as a whole, I will say, I think it's, beneficial if you can say that that it happened week one for florida and not later in the year i've been on teams where it happens late october and you go out and you think you have a chance to really beat this team and you're going to shock the world and all that and then you go out and lay an egg like you mentioned and you kind of have that feeling of like man well we're, we're just about out of runway here boys like we, we don't have that many more opportunities left to prove it to ourselves let alone everyone else that we are who we think we are so week one never ideal to lose the opener never ideal to look the way they looked obviously in that first game but even so a lot of runway a lot of opportunities here to kind of get this thing corrected and i'm excited to see what they do all right we've got a couple more questions coming for jd Pakel of on three and, and before we get to that uh, everybody if you like this uh, if you enjoy this video, like it on, on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube page. Please leave a comment. We're trying to do more of these things, trying to be more uh, engaging with the fans. Uh, now, J.D., here's an interesting thing. When I attended Billy Napier's media day, there were so many questions about togetherness and chemistry and culture. And I remember at the end of the, the media day, I thought to myself, is anybody going to ask about talent? Does that still matter anymore? <laughs> what, what am I missing here? So I ask you. We've dissected all the issues, and, and, and everybody has across the country that watched that game. The question that I still have, that to me is by far the most important thing, is does Florida have the talent to compete in the SEC? Did you see talent on that roster from, the, again, small sample size, but did you see anything that was encouraging? What, what were your general thoughts on Florida's talent level in that game? Or from well, game? I think the talking point going into the season was do they have a quarterback who's talented enough to get it done? And looking at the box score, I think Graham Mertz threw the ball 44 times total, which is never a good thing with how they want to run their offense. But I was really encouraged with how Graham Mertz looked. I mean, yes, there was that one interception off a tip, and that's not great. But at the most important position in football, I think you have a guy that can get it done. And like you said, one game sample size, we'll kind of see how things shake out from a depth perspective on the defensive side of things. But overall, like I, I didn't leave that game after watching Florida and say, man, just an empty cupboard over there. Like they're going to have a long season. Like I left that game feeling like I don't know who Florida is yet because of the game plan. And they hurt themselves a ton in that game that, that allowed them to get into the, that situation where they got to go and, and score points quick, fast in a hurry, which isn't what they're built to do. So from a talent standpoint, I think to, to put it simply, I think they're within range of where they need to be to, to be able to get over that number that Vegas has for them. I mean, I think there's still a team that can, very much so make a bowl game and make some noise. Uh, are they going to win the SEC? Like probably not where I'd put my money today as we sit here early September. But even so, I think I think they're going to be one of those teams that you're going to have to deal with them, especially going to the swamp. It is never going to be an easy task. So really encouraged by Graham Mertz and I think it's still a little bit early to to make any definitive statements on on the rest of the roster, especially defensively. Okay, last question. And, and, and this is catching you off guard, you know, we can edit it out. We can do something. No, but, uh, you know, what <laughs> advice, I mean, you, were, you weren't a college coach, and I wasn't either, but, you know, you played. I'm a fan. I've followed the sport for years. So we, we, it's not like we, especially you, you have a good understanding of what goes on inside that team, in, inside the team dynamic. What kind of, what, what do you think's going through Billy Napier's head right now? What can he do to block out, as Ron Zook, the former Florida Gator coach, used to say, the noise in the system? It's awfully noisy after a game like that. Um, everybody's got an opinion. They're all negative. Uh, they're they're poo-pooing you. They're talking bad about your program. They're talking bad about your kids. So what do you think is going through his head right now, uh, knowing football coaches as you do? And, and what can he do to kind of get his team focused on, on the path ahead? I know that's you know, it's funny because when we were yeah. getting ready for this conversation, I was thinking about that exact kind of concept. And I mean, last year to beat a team like Utah in the swamp, you're kind of trying to manage the other side of that. It's like, okay, hey, let's try to stay as level as possible. Let's try and bring them back down to earth. We still got a lot of football to be played. And so I think it's the exact same kind of mission of how do we get our team to level? And so I think as best you can, you tell your team, hey, we got a 24 hour rule, which is we have 24 hours to either celebrate a win or mourn a loss, we watch the tape, turn the page. Like we, that, that we, we just, we cannot afford to be an immature football team that lets one loss turn into two, turn into three. And I think that's what Billy Napier is saying. I also think that 
based on what we saw last year from this Florida team, I mean, they, they had every opportunity to pack it in multiple times during that season. And I kept seeing them respond, respond, respond. So that's a testament to the locker room, obviously, but I think also a testament to what Billy Napier has cultivated and allowed from a, a player leadership standpoint. So I look for that to continue. I think that you're going to see this team continue to play hard for Billy Napier. I think he's made of the right stuff. And uh, it's just it's tough to win in the SEC, as you know, Keith. Like it's it is a very very difficult mission to build something from the ground up in that conference, as opposed to you no know, knocking the other conference, but the ACC or the Pac-12 or whatever it ends up being. Like the, the turnaround mission, the turnaround time is brutal. And so, I mean, all that's to say, I think Billy Napier is made of the right stuff, like I mentioned, and I'm very very excited to see how they respond to this kind of game. All right, that'll do it with on threes, J.D. Piquel. To wrap it up, he uh, he doesn't think it's the end of the world for the Florida Gators. He does see some talent, and he thinks they should put that that last game in the rearview mirror as quickly as possible. But also, uh, J.D. Piquel is a young superstar. I think he's he's uh, he's uh, a guy you need to follow. Go follow him on Twitter at or excuse me, formerly what was formerly what well, is formerly. <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. the the um, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. Uh, at J.D. Piquel. J.D., thank you so much. You're always gracious with your time. We appreciate it, and, and I know the Gator fans do too. Thank you so much, man. Anytime, Keith. Thanks for having me on, brother. We'll do it again soon.